morning, everyone. Happy Labor Day weekend. <laughs> it's a beautiful, beautiful day, and I'm really glad to see so many of you here today. This is really um, affirming. Uh, it, it your faith and your faithfulness on a, a holiday weekend. So this is a really nice, a really nice sign. Good to see all of you. Let us begin our service and our worship with hymn number 451. And thank you, Leah, and thank you, Pat. Please rise. All hail the power of Jesus' name. We will sing verse 1. Who are you? Verses 4, 5, and 6. 1, 4, 5, and 6. Blessed be the one holy and living God. Glory to God forever and ever. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We will sing the Gloria twice. It's our last Sunday for singing this particular yes. service music. So sing out. <laughs> God be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Lord of all power and might, the author and giver of all good things, 
Graft in our hearts the love of your name. Increase in us true religion. Nourish us with all goodness and bring forth in us the fruit of good works. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. May be seated for the readings. A reading from the book of Jeremiah. O oh Lord, you know, remember me and visit me and bring down retribution for me on my persecutors. In your forbearance, do not take me away. Know that on your account, I suffer insult. Your words were found and I ate them and your words became to me a joy and the delight of my heart. For I am called by your name, O oh Lord, God of hosts. I did not sit in the company of merrymakers nor did I rejoice under the weight of your hand. I sat alone, for you had filled me with indignation. Why is my pain unceasing, my wound incurable, refusing to be healed? Truly, you are to me like a deceitful brook, like waters that fail. Therefore, thus says the Lord, if you turn, your ba if you turn back, I will take you back, and you shall stand before me. If you utter what is precious, and, what, and not what is worthless, you shall serve as my mouth. It is they who will turn to you, not you who will turn to them. I will make you to this people's fortified wall of bronze. They will fight against you, but they shall not prevail over you. For I am with you to save you and deliver you. I will save you from the grasp of the ruthless. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Let us say a portion of Psalm 26 together. Give judgment for me, Lord. For I have lived with integrity. I have trusted in the Lord and have not altered. Trust me, O Lord, and try me. Examine my heart and my mind, for your love is before my eyes. I have walked faithfully with you. I have not sat with the worthless, nor do I consort with the deceitful. I have hated the company of evildoers. I will not sit down with the wicked. I will wash my hands in innocence, O Lord, that I may go in procession round your altar, singing aloud a song of thanksgiving and recounting all your wonderful deeds. Lord, I love the house in which you dwell and the place where your glory abides. A letter of Paul to the Romans. Let love be genuine, hate what is evil, hold fast to what is good, love one another with mutual affection, outdo one another in showing honor, do not lag in zeal, be ardent in spirit, serve the Lord, rejoice in hope, be patient in suffering, Preserve, persevere in prayer, contribute to the needs of the saints, extend hospitality to strangers, bless those who persecute you, bless and do not curse them, rejoice with those who rejoice, weep with those who weep, live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. It is, if it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peacefully with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God, for it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. 
Thanks be to God. Please rise for the gradual hymn. It's in our Wonder, Love, and Praise book, number 757. Will you come and follow me? to you, Lord Christ. Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and the chief priests and scribes, and be killed and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord, this must never happen to you. And he turned and said to Peter,
praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the Creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit, amen. amen. You may be seated. Okay, here we are. How many of you, or someone in your household, or someone in your family, will enjoy a day off tomorrow from work? <laughs> yes. Yes. Me, yes. <laughs> Day off. <Woo-hoo. laughs> I totally get it. I totally get it. <laughs> Tomorrow is my Sabbath, but I will share a very nice day with my husband. So I too am looking forward to tomorrow. Labor Day is a holiday that many of us look forward to but it's not widely appreciated or understood. It became a federal holiday, here's a little background, in 1894 to honor and recognize the labor movement. Yes, labor unions, people who work, people who labor, in 1894. And the roots of the holiday are found in an 1886 resolution from the American Federation of Labor calling for an eight-hour workday. Now, you'll recall that adults and children worked from sun up until sundown for six days of the week before that. in September, halfway between the 4th of July and Thanksgiving, specifically to give people a break, a much needed break. In 1909, quite a bit later, the American Federation of Labor also established the day before Labor Day as Labor Sunday. That would be today to recognize the spiritual aspects of work. And the idea of Labor Sunday seemed pretty noble, but it didn't get much attention or appreciation by the clergy across denominations. So it seemed like many people, for them, honoring the labor of people on Labor Day was a little bit less important than recognizing the official end to summer, you know, and the last day to wear white. So So tomorrow, many, but not all people in the United States have the day off. So I went to Merriam-Webster, yes, they are still in the dictionary business, (laughs) and they define labor in this way. It's the expenditure of physical or mental effort, especially when difficult or compulsory. A second definition explains that labor relates to services performed by workers for wages as distinguished from those rendered by entrepreneurs for profits. And a third definition describes labor as human activity that provides the goods and services in an economy. So today, we're here to worship, and we are grateful for all people who labor, all people who work, especially people who work 
in professions where they experience danger, physical danger. Today is Labor Sunday. And so all week long, I've been thinking about labor and work. And of course, I went right to thinking about my first job, of course. I worked at my first job in a cleaning room in a fur company in Berlin, Wisconsin. It was very dirty, and it was hard work. I didn't know much, but I made some money, and that made me feel good. And so over the years, I waited on tables, lots and lots and lots and lots of tables in restaurants. I provided music at piano bars, yes, that's true. And then I found my way through education into a career in higher education. But I know what it's like to work hard and to feel unappreciated and to be underpaid. I know what it's like to feel frustrated with a boss and with coworkers and to lose a job. I also know what it's like to present a budget and to argue for somebody to get a raise and to write reports and to lose excellent employees. The world of work is complicated. It's very complicated. And it involves effort and mutual trust. Work for many people is inextricably linked with a person's identity and pride and self-worth. Researchers say that we spend an average of 90 thousand hours of our lives at work or in work. It's about a third of our life. Yeah, a lot. So you would think that a caring group of thoughtful Christians would talk more about the centrality of work in all of our lives. Well, the word work in various forms is used in the Bible over 800 times. Over 800 times. We read about God's work. We read about the work of the Holy Spirit. We read about Christ's work. We read about the work of humans and physical work. And we read about good work. So with all this talk of work, it would seem that in our Jewish and our Christian traditions, all of this talk would help us understand its value. But what we find is that the church's view of labor and work is confusing. Long before Jesus, in ancient Greek society, the greatest imaginable life, get this, was a life of contemplation. Aristotle argued that the contemplative life was the happiest life. But we also know that in that society, people were organized in ways where the privileged could benefit from this. And they lived a life of privilege. The work was done by people in the lower classes and slaves. Now in the Hebrew culture, remember this is different, Hebrew culture, which is what Jesus was born into, work was valued. It was valued. We read that Jesus learned carpentry Saul of Taurus becomes the Apostle Paul, and he made what? Tense, absolutely. Priscilla, do you remember Priscilla? Quite the woman, she made tense too. And Lydia was a businesswoman who sold 
dye, purple dye. Absolutely. All those stories are consistent with the Hebrew view and the whole idea that a person should be self-sufficient and self-supporting in any kind of work. Now, of course, we read in the New Testament that, you know, the descriptions of the disciples are leaving their work. They're leaving their work to follow Jesus. But the early Christians, all the rest of them, were expected to keep on working and not give up their livelihood. So in the long, giant, huge story of Christianity, something happens around the year 400. And it profoundly influences our views of human labor. St. Augustine, God bless him, begins to describe work as demeaning. Augustine and leaders of the church say that living a sacred, celibate life, untainted by physical labor, is the only option for those who want to be truly, truly holy. And so the medieval church divided human activity into two camps, sacred and secular. And then it wasn't until the Reformation, around the year 1500, when Martin Luther began to write, that Christian leaders began to recognize the centrality of labor and work. And they began to consider its impact on the individual lives of people. But even today, Seminaries, theology departments in universities, and congregations all over the place, all different denominations, rarely engage in discussions about the integration between weekday labor work and the experience of Sunday worship. And truthfully, as Christians, most of us don't talk about the integration of work and God openly. But we know, we know that we are marvelously made for many kinds of things, for many types of work. And we know that we are marvelously made to love God. We know that we are blessed with memory reason and skill, we are blessed. And we know that we can find the strength we need in our scripture and from our faith tradition. In the experience of God. And so here we are as Christians on this Labor Day Sunday, and we can find strength in the accumulated wisdom of scripture where we read stories about people who call on God for help in times of uncertainty and in times of frustration. Today we're drawing from the passage Brian read in the story of the prophet Jeremiah, who asks God for spiritual strength to stand firm in a very, very, very difficult situation. We all read together the psalm, and we stand in solidarity with the poet who wrote that psalm, affirming that we indeed are living a life of faith. Yes, we are. A life of faith and integrity. That's the word that's used in the psalm. A life of integrity. And like the psalmist, we intend to lead a life 
of integrity. We draw on the gospel that Deacon Terry read this morning, which reminds us to always follow Jesus every single day of the week and never lose sight of divine things. That's what the gospel teaches us. And finally, we draw on Paul's counsel to the early Christians to love one another with mutual affection. In this passage, Paul reminds all Christians that we have the capacity to do many things. And we have the capacity to live with one another in peace. We are reminded in these passages for today and in all scripture that we have a source of strength for our weekday and on Sundays. We can also find a purpose in life in the accumulated wisdom of faithful people who have offered themselves to be God's hands and feet in the world. In our closing hymn for today, beautiful hymn Pat chose, in our closing hymn, we will sing, Lord, send us forth with hands to serve and give, to make of all the earth a better place to live. Today, let us praise God for giving us memory and reason and skill and for giving us the story of Christianity. What a story. And for giving us our faith tradition and for abiding with us as we work. And tomorrow in our rest. Amen. Let us affirm our faith standing in the ancient words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, life from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son, who is worshiped and glorified, has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. of the people.
Let us lift our hearts in prayer to our ever-present and ever-loving God, that we may live out God's call to us as the body of Christ, affirming each prayer by saying, Hear us, O Holy One. We lift up those whom we call to serve in the church, especially Michael, our presiding bishop, and for Matthew, our assisting bishop, Esther, our priest, Terry, our deacon, and Loretta, our pastoral assistant, that me, we may all share God's presence and love together and lead all people closer to God. Hear us, us O Holy, Holy One. One. We lift up the people of the church of the province of the Indian Ocean, a member of the Anglican com communion of which we are a part, and Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury. Hear, Hear us, us, O Holy, Holy One. One. We lift up our leaders in government, education or business, that they may promote justice and the common good for all. Hear us, O Holy One. We lift ourselves up for wisdom to be gracious stewards of God's creation and reach out to those affected by natural disasters such as hurricanes, wildfires, and extreme weather conditions. Hear us, O Holy One. We offer our thanks for God's healing grace and wholeness in our lives and the lives of others in need, and ask that we may best use our abundant gifts to address the injustices of all kinds, particularly for victims of gun violence, that as we reconcile with God's people, we reconcile with God. Hear us, O Holy One. We offer our thanks for the opportunity to celebrate employment and lift up those who are underemployed or unemployed that they may know the blessing of meaningful, life-sustaining work. Hear us, O Holy One. We lift up all the departed, giving thanks as they enter the near presence of Christ. Hear us, O Holy One. Let us offer ourselves to be Christ's body as we go out into God's creation so that we may example God's love where we live, play, and work. To, to you, you our ever-loving ever God. God. As we continue in our prayers this morning, let us lift up all of those individuals and families on our St. Aidan's prayer list. We pray for all those we care deeply for. And we pray for all those who we are called to love. We pray this morning for our country and for peace. We pray for those who travel on this Labor Day weekend that they may be protected from every danger and brought back safely to their journey's end. This morning, we pray in thanksgiving for Christ Episcopal Church in Whitefish Bay. We pray in thanksgiving for all of those who are part of this church. We pray for newcomers and for visitors. We pray for veterans and for all who serve in the military. We pray for first responders and emergency workers and healthcare workers. I invite your prayers and thanksgivings aloud or in your heart. Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In a multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, creator Christ and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor.
Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be always with you. And also with you. Let us greet one another. The peace of Christ. I know. <laughs> I'm dangerously close. I'm so sorry. I knew that the minute I said it. That's yours. <laughs> that's your line. But that's when it's listed right in there, so we can change that. Yeah, we sure will. <laughs> I'm, you know, it's really great to have you here. I'm just so glad. Uh, yeah. Can greet her. I'm, I'm going to kind of go up this way. And, um, Leah, peace of God be with you. So that was obvious. <laughs> I looked, I didn't look right at it. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> so anxious to get over to give peace to, yeah, I know. <laughs> peace, peace. <laughs> Brian, you're right, it did. It just jumped right out at me. Peace. <laughs> peace, Mike. Well, good morning and welcome. And boy, that was really lovely. <laughs> Call me Grace. <laughs> um, this morning, you have noticed that, uh, as well as last Sunday, um, Deacon Terry Garner is with us. And um, it's, it's just a joy to have a deacon in a church. Uh, uh, Terry and Lorraine, his wife, were here. Um, are both uh, going to be our, uh, you know, part of our community, and uh, Deacon uh, uh, Terry will help me lead worship, um, and uh, Pastor Loretta will also have a part in, in what we do. Um, so we're really a team, and I, I'm just so proud of this. I think this is really great, and it's just a, a, a nice uh, addition to the church to have a deacon, and I think it really fills out uh, who we are as, as a clergy. So um, I'm very, very grateful for you to come and join us. And, and thank you. So last Sunday, we had quite the Sunday, didn't we? Oh my goodness. Uh, what a great celebration. Uh, St. Aidan's celebration, St. Aidan's Day. It was a beautiful picnic. Thanks to all of you who brought fabulous food. It was just absolutely a feast. It was a feast and it was a, just a beautiful day. So um, thank you for coming and um, being part of that and part of that celebration. Um, and uh, if you missed it, we do have a beautiful cross uh, that was from the steeple of the church in our garden, and it is fabulous. So um, take a, a moment and uh, pray on that, if you would. Um, so this morning, we have a couple of birthdays. Oh, this is so exciting. Laura Schmidt, yay, <laughs> on the fourth, and Loretta is on the 8th, come on, you guys. And then Bruce is on the 9th. So we have three birthdays to celebrate this morning. Isn't that exciting? <laughs> oh, golly. All at the beginning of September. Yeah, September birthdays, woohoo! <laughs> yeah, this is so great, I love to celebrate birthdays. This is great. All right, let us pray for birthdays. All right. 
O oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray, on your servants as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their lives through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. How many years? Eight? Eight? Well, 39, 39 plus. 39. So I know Laura is eight. <laughs> I didn't ask Loretta. <laughs> and Bruce said quite, quite a few more. So uh, yeah. <laughs> 39 plus. There we go. <laughs> Very good. Um, and we have an anniversary to celebrate. Laura and John, would you like to come up and have us pray for you? Laura and John Johnston are celebrating their anniversary um, tomorrow. Yeah. Yes, I think so. <laughs> there are probably others too, but that's okay. We're, we're definitely going to celebrate the three of you tomorrow. There we go. Okay. All right. Let's pray. This is wonderful. Let us pray. O oh God, you have so consecrated the covenant of marriage that in it is represented the spiritual unity between Christ and his church. Send therefore your blessing upon these servants that they may so love, honor, and cherish each other in faithfulness and patience, in wisdom and true godliness, that their home may be a haven of blessing and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Congratulations. Congratulations. <laughs> you may kiss the bride. <laughs> Isn't love grand? It's just grand. <laughs> so this morning, Pastor Loretta will um, be uh, doing the anointing service. So please um, stay after the service, if you like, uh, for anointing and for a service of healing. And if you haven't uh, participated in this before, um, you might want to try it. It's a, it's a lovely service, and she does a just beautiful job. Uh, it's very meaningful. Next Sunday, we have the blessing of the backpack. You know what that means, yes. So bring your backpacks, and shrunks, bring your backpacks, and anybody else, and actually adults, if you have a backpack that you would like to have blessed, we will bless them all. Um, you know, yeah, I know, I was gonna say, I think a lot of us have backpacks that we use, so sure, sure. Yep, let's bring them all, bring them all. Um, and then we're actually also going to do a, kind of a short um, acolyte training. Deacon Terry is going to offer acolyte training after church for just a, just a little bit. So please, please join us. And actually, you know, anyone can be an acolyte. So um, children, adults, anyone. Um, please, please feel free to, uh, to join us after church next Sunday for that. Um, the following Sunday on September 17th, we'll be starting Christian formation, both for children and for adults. And we're gonna give this a try and see how it goes. We're a little bit different right now, so we're gonna try to figure out how to be together in formation um, in a different way. Uh, just give it a shot and see what happens. Um, but it's a, it's, it's a little bit different. Adults will meet in here and the kids will meet in the classroom. And um, each of those uh, groups will be um, facilitated by a clergy person and uh, uh, one of us, one of y'all. So um, it, it will be a very brief time, 30 minutes, but uh, the topics are, are, are the similar topics, and you probably saw them in the Stag and Staff, and I'll have a flyer for you next week with all of that information on it. Uh, we have more information in the Stag and Staff, so please take a copy of it. It's, uh, we have hard copies here, and you should have uh, probably received the, the email version as well. Just lots of good things. It's a beautiful edition. It really is great. It's wonderful. Are there any other announcements for y'all? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yes, please, Pat. Because we are uh, getting back into the regular pattern of Pentecost season the third time around, right? <laughs> um, this Thursday 
here with the first gathering together again of the Saint Aidan's Family Singers. Yeah. At 6.30. And if you would like to sing, and if your wife hasn't told you no, you can't, <laughs> then please come and join us. It's a wonderful time with wonderful folks that you can sing. Thursday choir. This is great. Yeah. Yeah, back in the swing. Yes. Thank you. Uh, next Sunday, we're going to prepare Mission Morning uh, after church. And everyone is welcome. We'll be discussing the final details of the Great Crusade Summit that is October 1st. I hope you all have it in your <laughs> Thank you, Nikki. Yes. Yeah, important meeting. I would like to offer a prayer for Labor Day. Um, this is a prayer that uh, was at the top of the E! News this week, if you, if you were kind of looking at that and wondered where that was from. It's from the Book of Common Prayer. Um, we have a prayer for Labor Day in our Book of Common Prayer, uh, which is a, just a wonderful, wonderful thing. Um, and I think that's the integration of work and spiritual life. I think it's a great model. Um, so I, I'd like to offer that same prayer that is from our Book of Common Prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have so linked our lives with one another that all we do affects for good or ill all our lives. So guide us in the work we do that we may do it not for self alone, but for the common good. And as we seek a proper return for our own labor, make us mindful of the rightful aspirations of other workers and arouse our concern for those who are out of work. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself an offering and a sacrifice to God. Please rise for the offertory hymn. We before in wonder, love, and praise. And we're going to do the same pattern that we did last time we sang this. The refrain, hallelujah, sing, we sing your praises all our hearts are filled with gladness, we sing that twice. So we sing it once, repeat it. Then we go to the verse. Christ the Lord to us said, I am wine, I am bread. We'll sing that twice. Then we'll go back and sing the whole thing through once each. <laughs> sure we will. <laughs>
This is a second one, so. Okay. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. God, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only Son, uh, eternal and begotten Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is, is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will, will come again. again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through our Lord Jesus Christ, by him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. As Christ teaches us, we pray. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come thy, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. 
Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, Therefore let, let us keep, keep the feast. feast. Alleluia. gifts of God for the people of God. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Amen. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Amen. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of peace. The body of Christ, the bread of faith. The body of Christ, the bread of peace. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of peace. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of peace. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of peace. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of peace. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of peace. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of peace. The body of Christ, the bread of peace. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of peace. The body of Christ, the bread of hope.
bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of peace. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of peace. Connie was in the back and she went to you. bread of heaven. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries 
that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, O oh God, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. We choose what changes us, and we love trans what we love transforms us. How we create remakes us. Where we live reshapes us. So in all our choosing, O oh God, make us wise. In all our loving, O oh Christ, make us bold. In all our creating, O oh Spirit, give us courage. In all our living, may we become whole. And the blessing of God Almighty, Creator Christ, and Holy Spirit be upon you and those you love, and those for whom you pray this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Our closing hymn is in the insert. The Lord now sends us forth. We'll sing it through twice with joy. Thank you.